welcome to another edition of Florida Newsmakers with our very special guest, Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of the State University System. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to be back. All right. So this week, Governor Rick Scott signed the state budget. While doing so, vetoed a 3% tuition hike for colleges and universities. Did you see that coming? We really did. I, I think anyone uh, who has been around and paying attention knows exactly how Governor Scott feels about the issue of rising tuition. Uh, and it's a concern to be respected. But I also have to credit uh, the speaker, Will Weatherford, uh, President Don Gates, uh, because they also understand the rising need for the resources to be able to operate what is the second largest state university system in the United States that also boasts, by the way, one of the nationally recognized lowest in-state tuitions for our students. It still remains a great bargain. So what do you make of this? Would you have preferred to see this tuition hike go through? Well, I think if you ask each university, they would tell you that they would have liked to have had perhaps the opportunity to talk about it and see if in fact they felt it was right for their institution. And we have 11 different universities, now 12, with the addition of Florida Polytech. And I think um, they would each tell you that they have different needs, different resource bases. Uh, so uh, the question was called, and again, we respect the executive branch's uh, ability to do that. But again, what a remarkable year we had in the Florida legislature, not only in terms of funding, but in terms of some of the great public policy that moved forward this year as well. Speaking of that ask, the governor's office actually sent out a letter to all the university presidents asking them to, to withdraw or stay away from any tuition increases. What did you make of that? Well, the presidents uh, were prepared completely to step up to the plate as they said they would before the legislative session and let the whole state know that, as they did before session, if they were able to get the $300 million returned to their budget that they had lost during last session, see a significant increase on top of that, that this would be a great year not to ask for a differential tuition increase, which is really the only thing that the universities and the Board of Governors controls. So at the end of the day, having been successful in that regard, I think people are satisfied at least that this is one of the better legislative sessions we've seen in many years. So this wasn't at all, even though despite the veto, it wasn't all doom and gloom. $300 million was put back in to universities. Absolutely uh, not doom and gloom. Both on a budgetary side, the restoration of the $300 million, almost $300 million on top of that to be distributed to the universities, about $140 million for uh, deferred maintenance, renovation, remodeling, new school construction for facilities. This was a remarkable year, both on the budgetary side and on the public policy side for our state universities. And there was another sweeping education enhancement bill that everyone at, at, in one all accord all celebrated and was happy to see pass. What did that bill do? Well, quickly, the highlights. First, the identification of the uh, now ensconced in legislation metrics. We took them from the national level to identify what we call preeminent universities. Uh, these metrics are looked at on a national basis in order to identify those universities that typically fall into the top 10, the top 25. We've already identified through those metrics the University of Florida and Florida State University, who will be our first two preeminent institutions along with a $15 million each in recurring funding that will go to those universities to move Florida to the top 10 and FSU into the top 25 in the foreseeable future. A, a major landmark in this year's legislation. The identification of online education and making certain that Florida becomes a major player nationally in online education, using the University of Florida as a preeminent leader in that regard, and then performance funding, a major move and shift toward performance funding for our universities to see to it that people are meeting certain benchmarks of excellence. So a great year this year in the legislature on the public policy side. Chancellor, you were the state's 15th lieutenant governor. Any thoughts of actually running for governor? <laughs> <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> I am a happy man. I was in the executive branch, of course, with uh, Governor uh, Jeb Bush at the time. Loved every minute of it. Uh, served uh, proudly in the executive branch, so I'll leave it to other people to uh, carry on the torch of public policy in the executive branch for the future. I'm happy in doing what I'm doing. Indeed. Well, Chancellor Frank Brogan, thank you so much for joining us here on Florida Newsmakers. Great to be back. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.